And welcome back to Houston Newsmakers, where I'm joined now by Dan Crenshaw, the congressman-elect for the 2nd Congressional District. Good morning, and thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. Good Won't be, be long now. Uh, yeah. Less than a couple Time of to weeks. to get to work. I know. <laughs> Won't be long. You'll be there. Um, what, what are you most excited about as you approach starting out in Congress for the first time? Well, you know, I, there, there's been certain moments where it all starts to sink in. Uh, one of those moments was actually getting an office. So I got an office in Canada. That starts to sink in that you're actually going to be doing this job. I think, I think the next moments where it starts to sink in and I'll really start to enjoy it is, is, is when you actually start making an impact. Or maybe, maybe it's that first constituent service that occurs. Maybe it's the first person you help inside the district uh, with their VA claim or with their Social Security. I mean, maybe that's when it really sinks in. It feels like you're, you're actually in a job where you can help people. And that's something you've been really excited about wanting to do, is it not? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the flooding issues as well. Maybe it's when I actually uh, get to start having conversations about, about, about you know, helping our flooding infrastructure, mm -hmm. but from a place of authority. I, I, think, I think that'll feel really good. Good point. All together different when you're talking and you don't have mm -hmm. any juice behind you, but now you have some juice as a congressperson. Exactly. So uh, it's, since you've been elected, what have you been finding out of, from your constituents about what their priorities are going to be, or just in general what your priorities yeah. uh, should be? Well, you know, I, I campaigned on, on a whole set of priorities. You know, that's, again, fixing our flooding infrastructure, uh, it's border security, um, economic freedom, you know, fixing our, reducing our health care costs. Th those priorities haven't changed. Now, I do have to live in the real world where I'm in the minority now in the House. So um, I'm still waiting to see what the Democrats, uh, I think, broader agenda will be. I'm not sure they know yet. Okay, they've got to pick the speaker. They've got, they've got, to, sure. they've got to do a lot of things, and, and the reality is we're in the minority, and we've got to find things that we agree upon. Now, there are the, those things do exist. Uh, maybe it's, maybe it's uh, you know, tackling the opioid crisis. I think we all want to reduce health care costs. I think we have very different ways of doing that, so that'll be a source of contention. Uh, what about work training programs, vocational training? That's something I, I've talked to a lot of Democrats about this as I've gotten to know my freshman class. They're very excited about working on those kind of problems. So there's certainly things we can work on. And what can you tell from the freshman class? You were there for the orientation. Can you get a sense of what kind of group you will be? Because it does, that freshman class is a pretty big class and it changes the dynamic, of course, as you said, in Congress. Can you get yeah. a sense of how well you might be able to work together or not? Yeah, it, it's a really big class and there's what, almost 90 people. So you, it's a lot of diversity in that class, a lot of different backgrounds. Um, I've heard that. Diversity one, came out in that right, group. Right, right. The diversity I care about, though, is the diversity of ideas. So sure. I, that's really what I want to see. Um, you know, on the, I, I, I would say this. The, the, there's, the, there's a whole array of ideas coming out of, of the Democrat side. So I'm always looking over there and seeing, like, well, so who, who can I work with? Who, you know, there's things I just listed as far as issues that I think we can work together on. Who believes in that? Who's who's willing to cross the aisle and, and, and come work with me on these things? Because I certainly am. Um, you know, who wants to work on? Everybody wants to work on infrastructure issues. Mm -hmm. So I think that I think there'll be a lot of bipartisanship there. Um, but uh, the other thing I noticed about this class is that, that not a lot of people come from political backgrounds. There's a lot of outsiders in the freshman class. It, it's an indication that I think the American people were looking for that. Um, they were looking for that diversity. You know, right. uh, you know, and, and I think that's great. Um, and uh, so we're happy to work with them. Let's talk about the, the guy you're replacing, Ted Poe. Here's a man who at one point was the youngest uh, judge, uh, fe felony court judge, uh, and elected to Congress uh, back in, and been there for 14 years, carved out a reputation as a conservative and pretty independent. Mm -hmm. I mean, he left the Freedom Caucus because he disagreed with right. what they were going to be doing there. How difficult is it going to be for you to fill those shoes, or do you even try? Well, filling those boots is uh, <laughs> they're, they're the big <laughs> boots. Um, but uh, you know, you, you, I'm my own congressman in the end, right? And uh, now I'll, I'll always use uh, Ted as a sounding board. Um, he, he'll, he'll be a great mentor going forward. Uh, he's got a lot of respect in this district, and it's well deserved. Uh, there's certain things that he worked on that I think uh, I, sh I should carry the torch on as well, and a lot of that was victim advocacy, especially like sexual assault victim advocacy, human trafficking advocacy. Again, bipartisan stuff. There's no reason it would be partisan. Uh, he was a leader on that issue, uh, and it, keep in mind too, Houston's a hub for that kind of activity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I think it would be great to continue that legacy. 
One of the criticisms of Congress, especially most recently, is because of the, the partisanship, the partisanism that's there. Uh, things have been bogged down a little bit. You may have seen the images from the Oval Office a couple of weeks ago where the uh, president was there with uh, uh, mm -hmm. Senator Schumer and uh, Congresswoman uh, Pelosi, and they were talking about the money that Mr. Trump wants for the border. Yeah. Um, and it was, several things were interesting from that, not only the, the, the visual of what was going on there, but also what the president said. Listen. I am proud to shut down the government for border security, Chuck, because the people of this country don't want criminals and people that have lots of problems and drugs pouring into our country. So I will take the mantle. I will be the one to shut it down. I'm not going to blame you for it. So that's the atmosphere you're walking into. Yeah. Um, do you have a challenge of trying to change that tone? But I should ask you first about the wall, about border security. How has your stance changed or has it changed at all when you were, from when you were running to when you were going to be taking into Congress? Well, well, my stance hasn't changed, but the reality of the situation I'm walking into has obviously changed, okay? So my, my question to Democrats is going, because I'm in the, I'm in the minority, that's what I mean by that. Uh, so I don't get what I want, <laughs> necessarily. But my question to the Democrats will always be this. Okay, you don't want a wall. I know you don't want a wall. You hate even the mention of a wall. Fine. Well, let's, let's table that for a second. Let's talk about just border security. I will go down to the border with you. I will look at every inch of that border and say, okay, we're not, we're not talking about a wall because I know you won't vote for it. What else? What else will prevent someone from going from point A to point B across this border? Because I think, or I hope, that we all still agree that we want a secure border. All right, they don't like talk of the wall, fine. I, I disagree with that fundamentally. I agree with the president's insistence on, on putting what is actually a very small amount of dollars into border security. It's, he's talking about $5 billion. I agree with that. But I also understand that I'm in the minority and I have to work with Democrats. So that's my question. Do you want border security or not? Uh, is that something that you're also going to have to do in terms of uh, negotiating, if you will, a place where you're all going to be able to come to as it relates to health care? was now, as of the last week or so, federal judge has said, hey, you know what, this is unconstitutional. Yeah. The president said, you know, this is great. It gives us a chance to come up with a great health care plan for America. Well, so far, that hasn't been, it hasn't happened. Even when Republicans had the majority and yeah. everybody was running for years on repeal and replace, and when they had the opportunity, nothing happened. So now it it's on happen. your shoulders to go in and make something happen. So how is that? It, it <laughs> is. It is. Well, again, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the Democrats' agenda on this will sure. be. Is there, is there, I think, from what I hear from the campaigning, their agenda is simply to keep the status quo. That, that is extremely harmful to Americans. So the, the premiums are continue to rise. They're out of control. This health care is blatantly unaffordable. I don't think the status quo is the right position. Um, if they want to continue to add more regulations and more government control on health care, I don't think that's the right direction. We've gone down that direction and it caused health care costs to rise. Um, I think we need to allow the free market to actually reduce health care costs. It's the only force in human history that has ever reduced costs. So we need to work with that. I understand it can't be a pure free market system. I'm not naive. So we do have to work with them on this. I think the, I think the path forward with health care is going to be certain incremental approaches. For instance, um, one system I really like, or you can call it a system, you can call it a model, is the primary, um, direct primary care. Okay, this sort of subscription service where a primary care doctor, um, you, you become part of their membership, you pay a very nominal amount, like we're talking maybe $100 a month, mm -hmm. you get access to a primary care doctor that takes you out of the emergency room and it gives you access to somebody who can, who, um, who can maybe help you over, over online or over a cell phone. Um, th those kind of things are, are huge cost savers and also renew that patient-doctor relationship that we're missing out on right now. Think that has a chance to be, at least be talked about? Well, it already exists, okay? We just do, as legislators, we need to figure That's out I mean. how, to, how to nurture it, all right? Get it expanded, I and mean, it shouldn't be that hard. Um, we have a minute left. I want to talk about the Saturday Night Live incident where Pete Davidson made some comments that were making light of the fact of your injury. And you came on and you said some things shortly afterward that showed, uh, that, showed that you're a bigger man, basically. Let's listen. Pete looks like Martin Short in the Santa Claus 3. <laughs> By the way, one of these people was actually good on SNL. Talk about what it meant to be on the national stage and how you diffused the situation that was ramping up pretty ha pretty rapidly. Yeah, it was uh, it was an opportunity to do, to, 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 to give America um, this new sense that we don't always have to be so outraged. All right, it was an, it was it was it was a for me it was a backlash against outrage culture, uh, which I think is important, which I think I, I hope everyone can learn from. 
I don't know that we have. I, I think we still see it every single day, right. uh, unfortunately, uh, where we bash each other over the head for everything you might have said five years ago, ten years ago, for every, anything you can think of. Mm -hmm. And um, I would just like us to get away from that. That's what that night was about. And we're going to talk more about that night and about uh, a lot of other things. we got Houston Newsmakers Extra coming up. Uh, Congressman-elect Crenshaw is going to be here. Click to Houston.com, go to the Newsmakers page and find that and you'll be able to get more of our conversation here. Thank you, Congressman. Good luck going forward. Thank appreciate you. I really it. appreciate it. We'll talk about final thoughts about coming up, uh, what's going to be coming up in next week's program. You don't want to miss it.